we will talk about the concrete chapter of the IBC first before going to the standard itself. Uh, 2009 IBC adopted, as you all know, ACI 318.08. 2012 IBC, on the other hand, has adopted 318.11. Now, this adoption did not <laughs> quite go smoothly, and that is something I'll explain quite a bit later that has created some problems with the concrete chapter. But, but, but this is important that 318.11 is the reference document. The number of pages in the chapter has gone down a little bit, and that is because uh, IBC still makes a number of modifications to ACI 318 requirements, and those modifications have been going down in number and size uh, from one edition to the next. Uh, this is a publication that we just brought out maybe a couple weeks ago, Application Guide for the 2012 IBC Concrete Provisions. Uh, this publication has three parts to it. In the first part, we look at the concrete chapter of the IBC, talk about the problem that we alluded to, and, and, and give you the solutions to the problem that has arisen. The second part is a detailed discussion of changes from ACI 318.08 to 318.11. The third part consists of a significant number of worked out uh, examples. Uh, everything that I'll cover today is covered in more detail in this publication, so you may want to uh, look into this. In uh, the at the beginning of chapter 19 on concrete, IBC says structural concrete shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the requirements of this chapter, mini chapter 19 of the code, and ACI 318 as amended in section 1905. So, uh, the important things that it is not only the design of concrete but also the construction of concrete structures that is governed by ACI 318. ACI 318 does not have a date associated with it. Nowhere in the code does do dates appear with reference standards for the date. You have to go to chapter 35 at the end of the code where all the reference documents are listed alphabetically by the promulgating organization. There, if you look under American Concrete Institute, you will see that adopted into the 2012 IBC is ACI 318.11, very specifically. Now, ACI 318.11 is to be used for concrete design and construction, but as amended in section 1905 of the code, that, that's very important. As I said, IBC still makes a number of modifications to ACI 318 requirements, and this tells you that in the 2012 IBC, those modifications are to be found in section 1905 of the code. Now, before we get to 1905, uh, the code is dealing with uh, chapters uh, 1 through 7 of ACI 318, beginning with 8 are the designers' chapters of ACI 318, and those are the ones that are modified in section 1905. In the front chapters, uh, Chapters 1 through 7, uh, ACI 318 is modified in, in uh, th there are three or so modifications left in the IBC to the front chapters of ACI 318. In 2012 IBC, one new modification has been added, and that addition is in section 1903.3 of the code. It, it says insulating concrete form material used for forming flat concrete walls shall conform to the relatively new ASTM standard or, 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 or spec E2634. So this is talking about this type of a wall, the, the 
forms stay in place after the wall is cast, acting as insulation. The concrete industry was promoting this type of construction in many parts of the country. Whether it has caught on, I, I cannot really tell you. But in any case, if you are going to use this form of construction, the insulating concrete form material must comply with the new ASTM. That, that's, that's, this is not in SCI 318. IBC is adding that requirement. 